How is it possible that U.S. Navy sailors lose track of time on an aircraft carrier? As we all know, defending a country is not an easy task. Doing so requires great power, and with great power comes great responsibility. As soon as a naval warship is deployed from its port, its crew members on board must work constantly and ceaselessly to ensure the ship is operational and ready to provide naval support at all times. On more ships like destroyers, naval sailors are required to be active for most hours of the day. At some point, however, these sailors are relieved of their daily chores and given the chance to take a breather. So, what do these sailors do during their valuable spare time and how is it possible they can lose track of time? Let's find out. It's a well-known fact that being a U.S. Navy sailor is not an easy occupation. It requires being isolated at sea for long periods and away from their loved ones. As part of their initial training, these sailors are made to understand the hazards that come with being a Navy sailor. While they're at sea, they can be exposed to bad weather, drowning, shipwrecks, and many other dangers aboard the ship. This part of their training helps them prepare and avoid such occupational hazards. Living on a warship is not as comfortable as you probably think. The living quarters aboard a vessel are usually small and leave little to no privacy for crew members. Generally, a sailor works for four hours and rests for eight hours every day. In other cases, a sailor can work for more hours than usual, depending on their department and responsibilities. An average sailor works for more than 40 hours every week at sea. To ensure a sailor doesn't become super exhausted while on duty, the U.S. Navy employs a rotation system whereby sailors can move from one department to another on deployment. This helps sailors to always be battle-ready at all times on a warship. For most of these sailors, their off time is not really an off time. They can use this opportunity to catch up on overdue tasks which they couldn't do during their work hours. Their off time is also a great period to perform basic chores such as laundry and cleaning their beds. On some days, there could be a military task going on like an at-sea replenishment or an aircraft coming in or leaving the flight deck. At the end of it all, on such days, when it comes down to how many hours a sailor gets in their free time, what should have been around eight hours of rest becomes three hours at most. Sailors do not abide by the standard 40 hours a week that most government officials are subjected to. For U.S. Navy sailors, their work week is divided into three sections. Unlike Sundays being the start of their work week, Thursday, which is usually the day their ship is deployed, is their day one, and their work cycle repeats itself until the day they return to port. That means crew members do not have weekends off, including Sundays. Perhaps this is why some sailors lose track of time because a new day is almost the same as the previous. Over the years, the U.S. Navy has made several efforts to ensure its sailors can be somewhat comfortable while risking their lives at sea. This is why some aircraft carriers have Starbucks outlets in a work environment where alcohol is prohibited. What's the next best option other than a cup of hot steaming coffee to wash your tensions away? A popular way U.S. Navy sailors let off steam during their time at sea is through steel beach picnics. Pictures and videos from this event have sparked envy even in the hearts of sailors and civilians on land. During a steel beach picnic, 5,000 sailors living and working aboard an aircraft carrier come out to the ship's deck to have a good time. Still, beach picnics haven't always been a means for sailors to have fun, though. The naval tradition was conceived by the British Navy as all hands to bathe back in the day. British naval warships were made out of wood, hence there was little to no provision for sailors to maintain their hygiene. Hence, all hands to bathe was an order for crew members to bathe in an open sea. Now with sufficient provisions made on modern-day vessels, jumping into the ocean has become a fun activity for sailors, even though it can be quite dangerous. The average aircraft carrier has its deck 60 feet above sea level. To eliminate or reduce the possibility of these sailors sustaining injuries from diving into the sea, aircraft carriers lower their hangar bay elevators to half that height. Therefore, they can jump off the ship at a height of 30 feet. Even as a form of training, these picnics not only help to boost the crew's morale, but also supply the sailors with some much-needed vitamin D. Some sailors are not allowed on the deck for months, so coming out to the Steel Beach picnic is the only time they can be under the sun. The deck, which is usually four to five acres of land, becomes small when everyone is present. Aboard the ship, everyone comes out to play and mingle. Various games such as card games, checkers, football, basketball, volleyball, and jump ropes are just a few of the activities enjoyed by the sailors on deck. Others settle for reading a book or sunbathing. And what's a picnic without food and drinks? The head kitchen staff member decides which food is to be prepared on the deck. There are also coolers of ice-cold beer made available for sailors to properly cool off. Some sailors would bring their gaming consoles aboard during deployment so that they can play games like Warcraft and Dungeons and Dragons with their fellow sailors. They can also play these games with their loved ones back home through the power of the internet. Other games like checkers, dominoes, chess, and card games are also frequently spotted with U.S. sailors. 
Crew members could also use their off time to explore other hobbies of theirs. Sailors could enjoy writing, reading, singing, and dancing as well. Sometime in the mid-1800s, an association known as the American Seamen's Friends Society was created. Their goal was to provide sailors with books and simultaneously boost morale and social skills. Music has also proven to be a great way for crew members to pass time on ships. Some songs, such as sea shanties, help sailors while working during their off time. Sailors could gather round and sing songs or tell tales as a form of entertainment. Sailors who are musically inclined, unlike their peers, would grab various musical instruments on board the ship and dive into the world of folk and soul music to keep things lively. Sailors who are more artistic than others often prefer painting artwork or carving wooden parts of the vessel. Painters among the sailors would make use of whatever they could find on deck as their art resources. All U.S. Navy sailors are entitled to take a leave. In total, a sailor earns 30 paid vacation days each year. To go on leave, a crew member must complete what is known as a chit. Then this leave request form must be notarized by the next chain of command. All that's left is for the sailor's leave papers to be processed by the personnel department. In special occasions, crew members can borrow some days out of their not yet earned leave. Among sailors, this is known as going in the hole. It's not usually supported, but it still rarely happens. Sailors can also go on liberty calls during holidays and weekends. Crew members can spend a maximum of 72 hours based on the defined range of a vessel's local area. A sailor can explore and must be able to return to the ship if called aboard immediately. Some warships have set their local area to be a 50-mile range, while others can go as high as 400 miles. Navy sailors are not allowed to take both leave and liberty calls at the same time. Cinderella Liberty demands that sailors return back to their vessels at a stipulated time. Sailors who are three weeks into accession training known amongst Navy sailors as a school have access to on-base liberty and are under a strict curfew. As they approach the end of the first three weeks and are going into the fourth week, sailors will start working towards off-base liberty, still under a curfew. The conditions of these liberty calls are determined by a crew member's commanding officer, and they can differ from time to time. It is without a doubt overwhelming to become a sailor in the United States Navy. A recruit has to go through eight weeks of rigorous training and exercises at Navy boot camps before being enlisted into Navy A school. Despite all this, the U.S. Navy still receives a huge number of applications every year. Alright guys, that's it for today. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you liked the video and subscribe for more.